Hi guys, while I'm waiting for the PCB to come in from China, I decided to start working on other aspects of the game. One of you guys came up with a really cool idea to quickly choose a cell using just a keypad. We'll talk about the detail in a future episode, but suffice to say, we will need a keypad. So here's our keypad, just 16 membrane switches with no electronics. I'm going to open a serial window, and if I press 1, 1 showed up. 2 press 8 so it actually does work as you can see we only have plus minus and one pin how is it possible to read 16 buttons with just one pin <laughs> the keypad is actually laid out similar to an LED matrix however instead of LEDs at each intersection of rows and columns we have switches Pressing one of these switches would connect one row to one column. Let's say we press this button here. So that would connect this row to that column. So to read a 4x4 keypad, we would need 4 rows and 4 columns. That's 8 Arduino pins. But as you saw, we're only using one Arduino pin. To understand what made that possible, we need to talk about voltage dividers. So here's a voltage divider. The voltage at this junction is controlled by the ratio of these two resistors. If we use identical resistors, say 4.K resistors, this 5-volt supply will be divided, hence the name voltage divider, into two identical halves, 2.5 volts each. If we change the ratio of these resistors, we would get a different voltage at this junction. As you know, putting multiple resistors in series adds their value. So if we replace this one bottom resistor with a bunch of optional resistors, we could hook them up using the keypad and come up with different values for the bottom resistor and therefore coming up with different value over here. Say we press this button right here that will connect row 0 and column 0. So that will connect this one which is actually ground to column 0 which is this one. We now have three of these and this is connected directly to ground and none of these really matter because none of those are connected to anything. So that's one value, so it will be 3 of the 390s. And if you go across and pick a different column, now it's column 1 and still row 0. So column 1 and row 0. So now basically we only have these two because this is now dangling just like these guys are dangling. So it goes this one, this one, and that goes all the way to ground and so on and so forth. Basically by doing this, you could choose a different set of resistors and therefore varying the voltage here. These two parts smooth the level of this voltage because the switches here are typically quite noisy. So this will smooth it out so it will not be so fluctuating over here. Okay, let's write some code to tie all this together. Let's open the serial port and read a zero pin where we connected the output of our voltage divider. The 1023 we're seeing is because we're not pressing any buttons, therefore we're getting a full blast here at 5 volts coming from here to here. These guys are not connected to anything because I didn't press any button. We are missing the bottom part of this voltage divider because there's a break here and none of these are connected. Now if we press one of these buttons, let's say we'll press row 0, column 0, that will connect this to that, we're grounding this, so that should bring this pin very low. Yep, one or two there. And if we go across, so this is still row zero, column one, still row zero with column one, we are now going through one of these resistors. So we got a 78 versus a two. As we go further to the right, we get higher and higher voltage because we are putting more and more resistors over here, creating a higher ratio between here and here. If we go to another row, it jumps even further. Let's see, what was the right one? This is at 203. It should be even higher at 244. And now, as we go across here, it should go gradually again. So 244, 289, 330, so it's about 30 each as it goes across, and from here to here, it's about 240. So, so for each of the buttons, we will get a different value over here. Let's write all that down. 
So these are the values we saw earlier, one for each button. And these are the actual keys represented by those analog values. We still read the analog value as before, but this time we're going to scan through all our threshold values, comparing them to that value. As you saw, the value fluctuates a little bit like this first one was like one or two. That's why we can't simply say if the value is equal to that threshold. Instead, we have a little slop here. If the difference between the analog value and the threshold is less than five, we would consider it a match. When we find a match, instead of printing the actual value like we did before, we are now printing the keypad that corresponds to that particular index of that threshold. If it matches, say, this one, that will be sub one, and then we will display sub one of the keypad right there. And finally, we wait until the button is released by watching the analog value. As long as the analog value is still pretty low, not quite 1023, we just sit here in this infinite loop. As soon as that's released, then we go back out here and the normal loop will take over. That's it. This is the whole program. So that's how you can read a 4x4 keypad using just one analog pin. I think it's pretty cool. If you agree, please hit thumbs up so YouTube would recommend this video to other viewers. If you like this kind of content, check out my other videos. And if you don't want to miss future videos, make sure you hit that notification bell icon so you'll get an email every time I upload a new video. Well, thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.